The Michael Hatfield Remax team presents Real Estate and More. Bay Area real estate is different than in all of America. And why? What's up with home buyers? What's on sellers' minds? How is the market? And much, much more. Now, here's your host, Michael Hatfield. Welcome to the Real Estate and More Show, and thank you for listening. You know we talk about many things on the show, including important topics and interesting people. A home buyer's decisions like should he or she buy now, the reasons to buy, where to buy, how to buy, and how much he or she should pay are all important questions. On the show today, we unpack today's thoughts, elements, and reasons integral to a home buy to help those buyers who are on the fence, then take a close look at where we are likely to go in housing market this year. To help us to provide today's thoughts for home buyers, welcome to the show, Nancy. Thanks, Michael. Oh, it's great. It's great to always see my wife. You know, I always have to do things like that. (laughs) So anyway, the Fed is now signaling that there are going to be three more interest rates. Yeah. yeah. Meaning that it's going to be a half of a point or one point decrease in what the Federal Reserve charges the best banks and customers for a loan. Well, how does that interpret into mortgage rates? It does through some type of correlated magic, and it always comes out as being correlated uh, to that. So you would think that one point decrease in your mortgage interest rate would translate to one point um, decrease in the Fed rate. So anyway, they're, they're saying three cuts remaining this year. They've stayed pat for a few so far. Um, I think they before that they had 11 interest rate increases and now they're saying okay well things are a little bit better now for uh, what we're going to see going into later part of you know 2024. So with that said um, what do you think? What do you think is going to happen when that happens that those rate in- decreases what will that actually do? What will it do? Yeah. Um, so you mean what's the bottom line? Yes. In that? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So the inventory increased 5.9% from January of this year, and the National Association of Realtors um, economist, chief economist, was saying that additional housing supply is helping to satisfy the market demand. Hmm. And rising inventory is uh, a great step in the right direction to move the persistent tight housing supply that we've been seeing across the country. The 1.07 million homes available for sale at the end of February of this year is still um, below healthy levels at just at just 2.9 percent or 2.9 months supply of homes at the current sales price. So anyways more so supply is clearly needed um, to stabilize the home prices. Yeah and it would also move some people out of rental housing into owning their own home which is Im- important. So more supply clearly needed yeah. from National Association of Realtors chief economist and he's so correct you know we see it out here with boots on the ground constantly that the housing supply is so short Mm -hmm. so short and there is um, without even an increase in in buyers we're still seeing it as being short so I I think it was important that we come out with this show and we say hey guys if you're interested in buying in the next year or two you should do it now because we do not see a lot of inventory coming down the pike to supplement the inventory of homes available for sale. Would you not say? I would say, and we know what happens when there is a shortage of something. What does it do to the price? Absolutely. Well, what about the home builders? Aren't they a, a part of the percentage of what's going on with uh, with uh, the, the overall homes available for sale? They're a large part of that, Michael. And so um, the home builders uh, broke um, above the key threshold of 50 recently and that's into a positive territory for the first time since July of 2023. So they have their own index, so they to speak. Do, the National Association of Home Builders and the housing market index climbed three points to the number of 51 in March, which is good. And any score over 50 on this index, which runs 
from 0 to 100 signals that more builders are viewing building conditions as good rather than not so that's great and then the three indexes posted gains this month with current and future sales expectations both well into expansion area at 52 and 62 respectively so that's good news yeah yeah so i i'm thinking that um Wow, anything above 50 on the Home Builders Association, uh, mm -hmm. when they actually um, come out with their indexes, anything above 50 is positive, and it's saying that there's optimism among the home builders. In a moment or so, we'll actually talk about what percentage of home builders uh, there are to the overall existing homes available for sale. Mm -hmm. Okay, so as a component, um, you know, the percentage is, is such for the new home builders and the percentage of um, homes available for sale is is a percentage a much larger percentage for existing home sale yep so <laughs> the persistent lack of continuously or previously owned homes for sale strong buyer demand and rates fall below last fall's peak They've pushed higher in confidence for the new home builders, but one thing that uh, we do to keep an eye on things is we look at what the uh, permits are saying, the new permits, and we see that uh, they've pushed higher in the permits uh, as of recent. So favorable home February for housing starts. Hmm. Big rebound in February, they say, but it was only 5.9% over January. And February is starting to get into more of a selling season than what you had before. So single family starts were up what? While multiple family starts were, mm -hmm. so tell us about that. Single family starts were up 35.2%, while the multifamily starts were down 35.9%. And that, that shift that we're seeing from multifamily to single family homes is wonderful because this is where the supply is actually needed right now. And, you know, we're excited about that happening, obviously. Absolutely. And the single-family building permits, they reached their highest level in a year, up 29.5% compared to February of 2023. It signals that the numbers for future supply are favorable. However, you know, I, when I read these things, I think favorable is one thing, but what's happening out there on the field, in the field with the boots on the ground? We're seeing all kinds of things. So you want to synopsize uh, about the permits, Nance? So one of the things for the new homes being built, um, the National Association of Home Builders Assistant VP for Forecasting was stating that single family housing is poised for a good year in 2024, which we're into uh, you know, the first quarter and that starts, so uh, it's a good year in 2024 mm -hmm. with starts and permits in an upward direction, which yeah. we like to hear. Now we're talking about the, the starts for new home construction we only. We're not talking about we existing, Correct. you know, for remodels and things like that. We're not talking about that. We're yep. talking about the new home permits and National Association of Home Builders is saying, okay, mm -hmm. forecasting wise, we're looking better and it's an upward trend. It but is. what does it mean in the overall mix? Please remember to go to our new YouTube handle, My Real Talk Show. That's My Real Talk Show at youtube.com and touch that subscribe button. You can also find past aired shows at our handle, My Real Talk Show, on YouTube.com. What does it mean? Well, we got to talk about and answer that in a moment or two. Okay. Okay, one other thing. CNBC came out with a report just recently that said the average monthly mortgage payments in the state of California mm -hmm. are at $2,576 per month. And that's just the mortgage payment. Mortgage payment. Okay. And that is $1,174 more than the U.S. national average. Significant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's, we're that's in California. <laughs> uh, housing costs, 97% higher 
than the national average. And you know what, it, we've got the most expensive to state to live in, California. And it sure is one of the most beautiful states to live <laughs> there in. There is a good good part and there. enjoyable. <laughs> yeah. Now if I were to say, Nance, what would you think about where is the most expensive place in the U.S. to live? Mm. The CNBC report said, I feel like the guy on, uh, mm. on television, right? Tell me. He said, um, SoCal. Most yeah. expensive place place in the United States to live is Southern California. Interesting. But then I say, well, what about the most expensive cities to live in? Mm. Do you know the answer? I don't. La Jolla? I don't know. <laughs> you, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Sunnyvale, <laughs> San Jose, mm. and San Francisco. And that has been justified by the big tech three giants of Google, in, um, uh, Intel, and Oracle, and LinkedIn as being a big, big uh, uh, employer down in that area of uh, the South Bay. Makes so sense. here we are in San Francisco. You know, we we expect to pay more. Actually, 67 percent higher cost of living. Mm -hmm. than the entire state and 125 percent higher than the national average that's Sunnyvale San Jose and San Francisco wow. that's 125 percent higher than the national average in cost of living mm -hmm. but really that's no surprise we've always known that that we live in a microclimate of the housing industry here in the San Francisco Bay Area. We've always known that. There's no surprise there. So back to the uh, monthly average mortgage payments mm -hmm. being uh, $2,576 per month uh, in the state of California. Do you know which one is the lowest um, average monthly mortgage in the U.S.? I what state? No, exactly, but I would guess it's likely a southern state. Mm, why? Uh-oh. Cost of living? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so. West Virginia. They say, according to this uh, report, that uh, West Virginia has the lowest cost of living uh, and I'm correction, lowest monthly mm. mortgage payment of $961 per month, and just above that would be Arkansas mm. at $1,022 average per month. Makes sense. So it kind of reminds me what some of the old boys in the airline industry used to say <laughs> is, why do divorces cost so much? Well, mm. why do housing payments cost so much in California? It's worth it. It's nice to live in it's, California. It's nice to live in California. Nice. There's a lot of really great things. But one of them right now is the problem that we have, the challenge that we have with um, how do we get inventory into the system. We need to have homes to sell in order for homes to sell themselves. I mean, if you don't have it, you can't sell it, right? Right, exactly. Right. So we're talking... Um, what generation is likely to downsize? That comes to mm. mind. <laughs> oh, well, mm, uh, let me think about that. Recent report came out and it said that uh, the boomers, which is Generation Jones, that's boomers number two. Mm. That's people that uh, are born between 1946 and 1954. That's people generally between 60 to 69 years of age. And they are the ones that are most likely to um, find themselves downsizing. So maybe they will put some homes on the market, maybe not. <laughs> and uh, you know, they certain traits with uh, this particular group, is there not? I think you're right on that. I mean, we we work with an assortment of ages, right? From younger and first-time home buyers to, of course, the boomers. And so there are, I think there is a um, kind of a trend of, you see some, you know, characteristics. So one of the things when you're working with the boomers or the seniors that they tend to appreciate and um, and it va and value uh, communication number one it's a big deal customer service they value and just you know those would be some of the key key elements that boomers tend to like um, and so since they are a large part of the population right now I don't know what the numbers are but um, you know I'd say mm -hmm. that that that
definitely matters to them. So. One person went so far as to say they're the fastest growing population of potential clients for uh, real estate agents mm. uh, with actual buying power in this challenging market. They have considerably more buying power than the uh, new millennials because they've been in their homes for a long time. Yeah. And the number one important thing is to in the Bay Area is mm-hmm. to, to get that home, let that, let that equity build for you. Let the home appreciate in value. Mm-hmm. Let it happen, you know, and that's um, that's what uh, I think is it's great to to have them uh, as a potential uh, downsizer to put their home on the market for us to to come in and sell it to uh, people that need to buy. But I don't think this is actually going to solve the problem. It's just an interesting um, uh, statistic uh, to have, you know, it's just an interesting statistic to have. It is. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. traits should we look for in selecting an agent? Look for a deal maker with a positive attitude who will work tirelessly for you. An agent who is adept in multiple offer situations, drafting contracts, marketing and advertising a client's home, is familiar with multiple cultures, experienced in mortgage financing, inspections, and escrow is a huge asset to his client. What can you do as a plus for clients? Your agent is your eyes and your ears, one who works behind the scenes on your behalf, a great attitude, working well with others, and keeping clients' priorities number one is a given for us. Call 925-322-7775 now to schedule an appointment or complimentary home analysis. For excellence in real estate, call the Michael Hatfield REMAX team at 925-322-7775 or go to michaelhatfieldhomes.com. With low housing inventory and constantly changing mortgage rates, buying or selling home is challenging. Choose an experienced team who cares. Here's Michael Hatfield. In a quiet cul-de-sac near the quaint town of Clayton, revel in the wonderfully tall ceilings and open and spacious elegance of this immaculate 3,321 square foot, five bedroom, three bath masterpiece. 22 Wordsworth Court in Concord, boasts outdoor living at its best with sparkling pool and newly built gazebo. Plenty of room for an RV or a possible ADU. Highly ranked schools and a warm sense of neighborhood here. Don't miss this dream home. Get help with buying or selling a home by calling the Michael Hatfield Remax team at 925-322-7775. That's 925-322-7775. Or go to michaelhatfieldhomes.com. That's michaelhatfieldhomes.com. Now, welcome back to our show. It is. Yeah. So original boomers, uh, you know, mm-hmm. what year were they? Like 70? So 70 to 78. That group's 70 to 78. And mm-hmm. they, they're they the ones that are having to figure out what they want to do right now, I think, um, how to age in place. And there's been some research groups that have looked at it and said that that group is um, kind of the group that's in a quandary because they're trying to figure out what to do stay in their homes and age in place or you know if they haven't made long-term plans for health care and housing they might be you know unfortunately unpleasantly surprised about the challenges of the cost of creating a, a plan you hmm. know just um, quickly mm-hmm. so you know it's good to have a plan in place and and this group has the finances to make moves obviously they're they're established in their houses and such, but they're more cautious. They're absolutely more cautious. Although, interestingly, they're motivated to spend their dollar bills on things that they enjoy and things that they kind of view as luxurious, which is kind of interesting. <laughs> so, um, and then boomers don't really want to be considered the older group or the older population. But they are anyway. They are. They are. And what they also Age value for no one. is respect and independence. So, 
know, it's kind of those characteristics of the yeah. boomer gang. Yeah. I had Pat Batucci on here, one of our early shows, and mm-hmm. we talked about retire here, retire there, and retire everywhere. Yeah. But one of the important elements, critical elements, is what type of health care is available and you should retire around it. Because as we get older, we start getting a few more flat tires, and <laughs> this happens, that happens, and, uh, oh you know, we it's, it's always good to be close to a very good medical um, facility to help us with those uh, flat tires or whatever the problem may be. Well, so, and Michael, we were just talking to some previous clients who we've helped, and that was a large consideration. What should they do? Where should they move to for their current health care needs? And it's like, do they move somewhere else in California to closer to a metropolitan area, or do they perhaps move out of state so they're having to deal with that in real time and it is kind of nice if you can look at that long-term plan and have something in mind before Uh, you it's absolutely necessary yeah speaking of which we're back to the boomers uh number one boomers not the generation jones right but the original boomers age 70 to 78 Correct. and if they've not already made long-term plans for health care and housing it may be unpleasant for them as they move forward and trying to deal with the costs of creating a care plan care plan on the fly yeah so you know Good biggers advice. are a complicated big generation so we have have a lot a uh, lot to think about uh, as we get older yourself uh, yours truly included <laughs> and and what you know what we're going to do as we move forward but one thing now let's get back to the bay area and the housing uh, we've talked enough about uh, the, the people here that that live here that love it in the bay area and we talked about seniors a bit we've talked about interest rates one thing is for certain in my view is that when interest rates um, do decline do decrease, you're going to find more buyers in the market for that same number of loaves of bread on the shelves. And that's kind of, not kind of, but that is concerning because right now we're finding everywhere we go, if a home is for sale, then we're getting multiple offers. And this is, now I'm talking about in areas of higher density in the San Francisco Bay Area. If you live out a ways, it's going to be less activity, but we still are having um, a very, very uh, short inventory of homes that are. that are in the market. Don't you agree? We are. It's real and present for us, actually. Hmm. For sure. So I'm thinking, um, you know, seniors don't like to wait. I don't like to wait. You don't like to wait. And we like certain things. We like to talk on the phone as necessary. We like to be face-to-face with clients. Uh, our, our millennials don't necessarily like it that way. But one thing is for mm-hmm. most certain is that everybody has a heartbeat. We've talked about it before on the show. You know, how soon do you want to move? How soon do you want to list your home? Yeah. How soon do you want to be into your new property? Everyone has their own heartbeat. And that heartbeat changes sometimes during the process. It's, it's kind of in- incredible how we've observed that uh, working in our society. We have. Yeah, so uh, we've, we've had a continue uh, run-up in home prices uh, last year. A, a massive one, and I'm talking about Moody's had a chief economist come out and make some statements. What did he say, Nance? Right, so the Moody's analytics were saying that um, the run-up in prices, um, it's been a huge increase in creating wealth for homeowners, but then on the flip side, it's been a massive problem because for the first time home buyers, and so there's just simply not adequate inventory if you're ready to buy a house Mm -hmm. and um you know that's been a challenge yeah it's been a big challenge i noticed home prices overall nationally were up 5.14 percent in december of 2023 as a compared compared to Mm -hmm. december of 2022 and that's uh despite stubbornly (laughs) high mortgage rates and uh low housing um affordability so um in the bay area Probably much more than that in actual in actuality, as far as pres- uh, appreciation. <laughs> Keep going. Um, 
The head of Moody's also said that uh, the all-time highs in and around Texas and Pacific Northwest uh, fell off their highest um, in uh, the month of February, but only modestly, while they continue to push higher in Northeast, Industrial, Midwest, and Southeast. We're not talking about the Bay Area because we know home prices have went higher. So for the two-thirds of Americans who own their home, repeating, the higher prices mean a massive increase in their wealth. I'm going to say that again. Hey folks, own your home because that can create a massive increase in your wealth. But of course, as you said earlier, Nance, mm-hmm. what happens to the home buyer, the first time home buyer trying to get in? It's a big problem. It's a big challenge. What can be done? What can we do? Or what can we do as a nation to bring in uh, new homes for available for sale? Get those boomers. Yeah, <laughs> move them on. Well, you know what? I w- I've been um, uh, a real proponent of uh, mm. finding tax incentives for yeah. people that will move. If you have uh, older folks that uh, that are concerned about selling and they have more than uh, their five hundred thousand dollar capital gains on the sale of their home, make that a million dollars in a temporary period. Make it make it more to where they don't pay taxes on the sale, which removes some of the reasons for not selling. So, you know, they could that could be done. And I would like to see that actually happen. I think that's a great idea, Michael. Tax incentives yep. for sellers. It might be just a great idea to loosen up the inventory. I think that's something that should be definitely considered. Yeah. Early on in the episode, we were talking about is existing home sales mm-hmm. and uh, existing home sales. Uh, one predictor was saying in 2024 that home sales should be nationally 4,397,000. 4, That's 4,397,000. Mm-hmm. And new home sales projected to be 754,000. So 754,000 is only 17% of the existing home sales. So you add those all together and you see that, wow, uh, existing home sales are absolutely critical to the robust nature of any housing market. Also that they had forecast the interest rates in 2024 four to be approximately 6.1. My crystal ball is saying that I'm <laughs> thinking that we're going to be down around 5.7 percent. So hope. yeah, so 30-year Bay Area um, loan should run about 6.5 percent right now. <laughs> so I'm thinking you might see 5.7, 5.6 in 2024, perhaps even a little better in 2025. But I'm thinking that's where it's going to be right now. Can you talk about heartbeat of the the client for me? The heartbeat? You mean the momentum in a deal? There you go. Yep, the heartbeat of a client. We've talked about this on a number of occasions that uh, every client re- relationship with a purchase or a sale has a has a heartbeat, and we as agents need to assess that and be cognizant of our clients our clients' heartbeat or heart rate, but. Um, for instance, we, we had a, a client, a couple, an adorable couple, and they had some time left on their lease, and we were looking at homes with them for a few months, and then all of a sudden, it seemed like the momentum just got going. They were ready to find that home, and so anyways, working with them, um, you know, it, it can change. That was an example, but it can change, and it can start boom, boom, and then all of a sudden it's like quick heartbeat. But um, anyways, they um, this cute couple, we we just adored them. And, and anyways, so we went out to dinner with them one night and the adorable ladies took off her jacket and we looked and we thought, oh my goodness, this is the reason their heartbeat got <laughs> moving quickly. So they were... They were going to have a child, which was very exciting. That was one of those aha moments, it was, was it not? <laughs> it uh, was so cute. And so cool. And then to just to make a little bit more of a backstory, hey. their second child was born on your birthday. My birthday. It's exciting. And, and just recently, we had a first time home buyer and her lease. Okay, she was getting ready to, you know, get rid of her lease with her roommate, and and she just 
finally like kicked in I need to buy a place I want to buy a place and so she she got one that was exciting that was this year so yeah sounds good yeah. that's fun <laughs> people's momentum does do change their it heartbeat does. as I call it, it does. so in summary Nance in summary, yes, yes. So while housing inventory remains scarce, we've talked about the um, Federal Reserve words indicating for us to expect three interest rate reductions this year. Yes, three interest rate reductions this year. Existing home sales have increased some in February and new home builders buying a few more homes. That's all good except for a much needed increase in homes available for sale. So mm. we still have a few loaves of bread on the shelf for buyers. Interesting times Interesting that we live in. Times, yeah. All good information, Nancy. I hope these thoughts are, are helpful to home buyers who hesitate. As my crystal ball says, hmm, home prices are going to go up in the San Francisco Bay Area. Thank you for being on the show. You're welcome. Thank you. You've been listening to The Real Estate and More Show. Please remember to go to our new YouTube handle, My Real Talk Show. That's My Real Talk Show at YouTube.com and touch that subscribe button. You can also find past aired shows at our handle, My Real Talk Show on YouTube.com. We'll be right back with our next special guest. Stay tuned. The views and opinions expressed are based on current economic and market conditions and are subject to change. Information on the show provided for illustrator purposes only and does not constitute professional or legal advice. Information from sources deemed reliable, but accuracy and completeness not guaranteed. Michael Hatfield and the Michael Hatfield Remax team have no liability for information discussed on the show. Consult with qualified professionals prior to taking action.